Hey everybody, what is up? Free Agent Bowler in with you. Thanks for coming by to check out the review of the Big Bowling Shim. I really appreciate you coming in. If you're new to the channel, thanks for being here. You returning guys, you subscribers that keep coming back, thank you so much. Uh, really, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you told me that I'd be near 2,000 subscribers when I started this, I'd have told you you were crazy. But because I am, I've got a very special video planned, uh, and I'm also going to do a giveaway. I have a, an undrilled piece one of my favorites in the basement that I'll be giving away uh, to one of you uh, as, as a subscriber. So thanks again for doing that. Before we get to this, let me give you my three promises. Number one, guys, I'm a non-staffer. This is a non-staff review. I wasn't comped this ball. I wasn't given this ball. You'll see good shots. You'll see bad shots. And I'll, I'll pull no punches in my thoughts about it. Number two, Every ball that I review has at least 10 games on it. This has 15 as of the shooting of this game. And then number three, guys, is just about honesty. I want you to know when you see my reviews, you're getting a fair and honest assessment, not based off of one game and a snap judgment, but based off the body of games that I've thrown it. So you're getting a 15-game assessment with this particular review. Uh, layout 4.5 by 3 by 1.5 storm pin buffer system matches the shim wrecker. 246RG040 differential has the powder keg core and the P5 reactive cover stock, and I'll go into that in a minute. There's the two images. I know some of you guys like to see those just to see what it looks like, and you can see that that ball is a, is kind of ugly. <laughs> anyway, go to Buddy's Pro Shop. Make sure you use the code FABOWL5. You'll get 5% off your order. There. Some of that's manufacturer protected, but it's always worth it, right? So down into it for the first frame so uh, just right away i'll tell you hallmark of this ball is is smooth um for me as a higher speed player this ball doesn't have a a ton of back end snap going on this ball doesn't have a a, a real left turn type of motion to it uh, I mentioned just a minute ago that this has the P5 reactive cover stock. So it's got the same core as the shim wrecker, uh, but the, the cover stock is different. So P, in, in the big bowling line, the P is predictable. And the number following that is a hook rating on a scale of 1 to 10. So this is predictable in a hook rating of 5. So a lower flare, very low RG ball. Reads a little earlier, <clears throat> but it gets a little further down lane than you would expect with that low of RG. So, um, pretty good, pretty good ball here. Uh, I, I think it really does complement the Shim Wrecker pretty well. The Shim Wrecker is definitely a much more aggressive ball. The Shim Wrecker definitely has more in it. Uh, that has the ME6, which is middle to end, and a six on one to ten. So I really like the way Big Bowling does their their cover stocks. It, it seems to make a lot of sense to me and very easy for people to follow. So, um, but back to this one. I, I think the this ball is actually slower in reaction than the Venom Fatal, which was a very slow smooth consistent pearl which i really love for me um and what's really interesting is i i threw these on wednesday night uh in in my my league on wednesday night and i threw them back to back with each other in practice and uh the venom fatal was was moving much much more aggressively than this ball uh even and this ball has a little higher differential obviously lower rg but a little more differential uh, basically the same finish, but but the fatal was moving uh, substantially more. So um, I really do like this ball, but to me this ball stands out as more of a tournament ball, especially for a higher speed player like myself. Um, if there's one criticism that I have about this ball, it's that it is highly susceptible to speed. Uh, it's one of those balls that if you get a little fast or a little slow, it's it's either going to do nothing, it's going to skate on you, or it's going to come right across the head pin, you know, and leave you in trouble. So it, it, it's it's very important to be pretty consistent with your with your speed. And I, in this game, I really tried. I think I was within a tenth or you know point one five miles an hour every single time. Uh, but this strikes me as more of a tournament ball. Uh, that one right there you just saw, I got way too fast with that, and it just kind of skated on me. Um, 
which is a bummer because I was pretty well lined up there. But um, overall, I think it's I think it's good. But I think this ball is probably better suited in the hands of a mid speed or higher rev, lower speed player. Uh, I, I think those guys can get a lot out of this. If you if you don't have, uh, you know, if you're a low rev guy uh, and you're lower speed, I'm not sure that this ball probably fits you great. Um, I, I suppose it could, depending on how it was drilled. Uh, but honestly, I think it's it's for a mid speed matched or rev dominant player is really going to see some some absolutely insane results with this ball because it will snap. For me to get it to, to really snap, I really have to hit it hard and I have to swing it and it has to be a little drier. Uh, that's why I say it's a tournament ball. In a tournament situation, I could definitely see pulling this out and having a much smoother look to the pocket than maybe with some other pieces that I have. So uh, overall, very good though. I think this really does complement the shim wrecker and that in itself is the testament because so many companies miss on that when they make a solid and then try to make a pearl and they didn't here. So you see the game finished 268. I know I screwed up. It was supposed to be the image I forgot. Sorry about that. So the question is, does the shim make the bag and is it the main bag or one of the totes? Right now I'm undecided. Uh, it's a good piece. I just am not sure if I have a place for it at this time. So I graded it at a B and we'll get to the score sheet right now. Um, I graded it at a B because um, there's just some some things that I don't love. Okay, so one, the appearance. This man, I got to tell you, nothing against the guys at Big because they're great over there. They're super cool dudes. This thing is ugly as sin. This this ball is really really ugly. <laughs> so I gave it six points there. Uh, reliability is is the motion that's built into the ball a reliable motion to strike with. And for me, I gave it an eight. Um, the shim wrecker scored higher with the same core. I just think for me, this cover stock is a little suspect. So I might play around with some surface and see if this changes over time. Uh, repeatability is, is the motion that's built, pardon me. Repeatability is, if I do the same thing every time, will the ball do the same thing every time? And the answer right now is, is not really. Uh, I think it does. The majority of the time but there are times that it doesn't it does finish pretty well you saw some deflection in this video but to be honest i think that was primarily uh the the lane condition that i was on uh and then hitting power it hits pretty well it does not hit like the shim wrecker though that the shim wrecker might be one of the the best hitting bowling balls i've ever thrown uh so it finishes out here 39 points in a b price to performance ratio you see it there 0.78 not bad, uh, definitely not up in those high point eights or any, even into the point nines, um, but but a good ball. So let's take a look at some different angles of attack. This is a pretty heavy shot, so I didn't go too far left, but you'll see some comparisons here, uh, and you can definitely see how much more aggressive the shim wrecker is. So you see where this one is down and back up at, and it comes just you know a little light. So check this out. Same same line, basically. Look at this ball. It just absolutely takes off. And therein is the difference. I think for me, if I'm going to use this on a house shot, this is going to be a step-down ball, a ball that I step down to to really be able to control the back end. Um, and really, I don't know that I could control the back end better with this than I can the Venom Fatal. So the Venom Fatal will, will stay in the, in the main tote for now. Time will tell, though. I'm, I'm going to play around with some finishes on this and see if I can get it to change. So I move left a little bit, um, and and we try to get down about 15 in that area. Back up. Looks pretty good in route there. Had to slow it down a little right there, but check out the shim wrecker. So a lot different. You know, I had to give the shim wrecker room because without it, it, it finishes way left. So... Uh, it's definitely a step down from the shim wrecker and is pretty complimentary. But I think if you're looking for a low flare, kind of slower reacting pearl and you're a mid-speed mid matched or rev dominant guy, I think you could really, really 
enjoy this ball. It's going to be it's going to be good for for some of you. It's going to be really really good. For me, I think it can too just on certain conditions. So, what's in the bag? Well, as always, let's step through it. The Venom Shock Pearl is in there, stays in there, it doesn't come out until it breaks or something. So, <laughs> I love that ball. Uh, the Radical Results is in there. Uh, really enjoy that piece. Shot a couple threes with it. Good ball. The $100 DV8 Decree, still one of the better solids out there. Kind of lazy, but I love the, I love it. Uh, the Phase 3, a uh, little bit of lane shine on that thing. That ball is glorious. And then, of course, you've got the Radical Results Solid, uh, which is in there and is still... It's, it's rapidly becoming the first ball that I grab almost every time um, just to see what's happening. Uh, it just, I don't know, it, that ball and I are really kind of coming together. And then, of course, you've got the, the big bowling uh, shim wrecker, which uh, to me is, is probably as, as true of a benchmark ball as you're going to find. I do use this one quite a lot too, but not quite as much as the results solid. Um, so what's in the tote? I'll show you. The main tote is the same three. So you've got the uh, Black Pearl Bloody Ocean, the Venom Shock, and then of course the Venom Fatal. Both fantastic pieces, all of them are. So what's next? Here's what's next. The two ideas, those are coming to me. They'll be here any day. I'll put games on them and, and that'll be the next review that I do. Uh, but the two duns there are the Shim and the Shim Wrecker. The ideas are next on the on the slate. And then, of course, the retro re review of the DV8 Poison. I will get that out as well. Once more, guys, don't forget to go over to BuddiesProShop.com. Use the code FABOWL5 to get 5% off of your order. Uh, they usually have great prices over there. Chris and the guys over there are fantastic. I also want to say thanks to Arapahoe Bowling Center for allowing me to come in and do what I do. Uh, and I'm, I just cannot wait for the next group of videos to come out because you're going to see some really good players coming on these videos with me. And then, as always, I want to say thanks to Bobby's Pro Shop. He's one of the best around. He's my guy. Really like him a lot. And uh, definitely if you're in the area, you're looking for some equipment or something or answers, he's your guy. Look him up over at AMF Aurora. And then uh, also, thanks you to you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Make sure you subscribe for the latest stuff. And if you've got any questions or whatever, email me right there. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you soon.